Dialysis clinics is one of the biggest rackets in U.S. healthcare. Now, the union in California is taking on the big boys in the industry over it. Welcome to Care Talk Short, where we take one important issue and delve into it. So, John, what's going on whoa, out in whoa, California? Whoa. Let, let's start by saying dialysis is important because of end-stage renal disease, which is the direct result of diabetes, which is the direct result of obesity. We have the highest health care costs in America. Di the diabetics are one of the fastest growing, most expensive groups in America. This area is large, it's expensive, it's $42 billion already, and it's about to explode in cost. So figuring out how to unwind the costs of, of dialysis you know, as a way of reducing the cost of diabetics and perhaps even improving their lives is really important. It's not just about the politics of the moment. So John, dialysis is so complicated and convoluted that even you and I don't completely understand what goes on. There's a lot of secrets Wouldn't out there. Wouldn't be a there. surprise. Right, but now we're using the crudest possible method, which is a ballot initiative. Yeah, I'll talk you know, about that because, that because because that doesn't even make sense to me from an East Coast perspective. You know, with that California tan of yours, yeah. perhaps you could explain what they're doing in California. California dreaming, John. So. What's happening is there's a ballot initiative that essentially wants to cap the prices of dialysis clinics. And they want to say, you can, you can only charge up to 115% of your direct costs. And you have to give a rebate, a refund if so you charge more the, than that. the price at a per company basis? or the actual revenues of the company or the revenues of the clinic? Well, if you look at it like from, a, you know, with, with your green eye shades, the whole thing doesn't, doesn't quite make sense. Let's step back and let's see what's interesting about it. Take a guess, John. How much do you think is being spent on this ballot initiative? This is like a little wonky thing, I don't right? Know, million dollars here, million dollars there. I mean, it's a, it's a statewide initiative. It's a big state, maybe four or five million. Yeah. So what's happening is the people that are opposing this have put out $120 million, $120 million opposing this measure. Wow. And the union's putting up something like $20 million in favor of it. Basically, John, dialysis is a racket, okay? It's legalized extortion to a large well, extent. Well, but people need dialysis. Why do you say that? So, John, of course, people need dialysis. And what's happened is actually, very interestingly, that everybody who's, uh, who's making an endorsement on this, the media, um, the American Medical Association, uh, um, uh, uh, the Association of Emergency Room Physicians, they're all against it because they say, well, you know, if you limit the costs of dialysis, limit the profits, you're going to have reduced access. The clinics are going to have to Doesn't close. Doesn't that make sense? And people need dialysis. I was, I was impressed by that. Sure. You know what it said? It says people need dialysis three times a week in order to stay alive. Do you know where the three times a week needing dialysis comes from? Physician preference, the people running the dialysis clinics. John, how come you're not on top of this getting people into the home? That's what they do in other countries. Well, no, I mean, one of the, what I think the more interesting question on the, with the, in the dialysis racket is how two large players have prevented the U.S. from progressing like every other country in the world towards moving towards home dialysis. If you look at the, the lo, very low single-digit home dialysis penetration in the U.S. versus the the teens to 20s in other parts of the industrialized world where people have, in some cases, better outcomes. It's cheaper, it's more comfortable, and it gets folks out of the clinics and back in the home where people want to heal and age. It doesn't make any sense other than the fact that you've got an oligopoly that's controlling it. But I'm still trying to figure out how can the ballot initiative make sense to you when so many of the influential leaders, some of whom do not have a, a dog in the fight from a, from a profit perspective, be against it. Could, could all of these smart people be wrong? Well, that, I think we've shown that ourselves. Uh, so yeah, I think smart people can be wrong, and I think they're looking at it in a fairly narrow way. You know, one reason why the, these companies are spending $120 million on a ballot question is just because they really want to decisively beat this thing, and so that when it comes up in the legislature, the legislature will say, well, nobody cares about that anyway. But in fact, people that really should look under the hood. John, if you think about Medicare, it, it covers older people, it covers the disabled, and it covers end-stage renal disease, which is kidney dialysis, essentially, is what's the, the treatment for that. So on the one hand, you've got Medicare supposedly paying for this, and on the other hand, you've got some weird stuff going on in the, in the private sector. I mean, let's talk about well, that the, a little the, bit. The, 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 and, and one of the ugly truths is the commercial, uh, the commercial side tends to overpay uh, and according to the, to, the, to the large players, Medicare underpays them. But the reality is this is an annuity for the large dialysis players. And again, my big issue is why aren't we talking about better ways to care for people and getting more people to the home? 
uh, where, where, where more care should be delivered. There's no question that there's, there, there's a lot about this that doesn't make a lot of sense. It costs a lot more in the U.S. than any other industrialized country. Our people are, are, are sick. The, 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 way of the, the methods of taking care of them is, are very similar. Uh, and, and that seems unsustainable. I think what's interesting to me is that you're starting to see a popular pushback around pricing and a real start of a, of, a, of a broader social conversation about how much is enough in terms of price and profits. And that's going to be an uncomfortable conversation for a lot of the in, in, industrial success stories in healthcare, not just in dialysis, but across the board. People want to know if they're being overcharged, that they're getting value, and that there's going to be a limit to how much they're going to be overcharged over time. I don't think this is just about dialysis. I think the reason why there's a popular initiative is people are, are sick and tired of paying too much money for health care. And I think that's legitimate. This, this isn't about the people. You know, both the pro and the con have the word patient in their name as though it's about the patients. But what's really happening here is you have two companies that have a stranglehold on the business. And the federal government looks the other way because in order to keep the federal payments down, they let these two companies basically extort the health insurance industry. The health insurers are afraid to take on the dialysis companies. And the union is the only one with the guts to actually do it. And it's a bloody fight and it's it's a great one it's, to it's, watch. It's a really interesting one to watch. I think that the 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 challenge is the, the broader conversation about how how we should be in, in organized from an industrial perspective, how much people should pay. The really interesting questions, how patients get better care at them, are not the ones being debated in this ballot initiative. And I'd be really careful, no matter how excited you are about this ballot initiative, to potentially throw the baby out with the bathwater. Because the ballot initiative really, as I understand it, just caps profitability at a at a clinic level, and that seems like kind of a crude and simple approach. That isn't going to necessarily de deliver more care to patients in the home. It's not necessarily going to de deliver better care, and it's not going to really affect what you what you affect what you are effectively calling the ugly ol oligopoly of the two large players. Uh, it's just sort of a way to wing them uh, around profitability, and so for me, it's sort of incomplete. Uh, what, what's interesting is that there's a lot of popular interest, and what's sort of obscene is how much money people are spending trying to buy votes in this on this one. This is one where I think we need to explain the issues and really deal with the bigger issues around patient access and care to dialysis at the home. So it's too bad, John, that the union, uh, instead of just spending all the money on advertising, didn't spend a million or two million to get a craft a really nice proposal that would really lay these these issues out. That's the downside. All right, John. So to cut to the chase. Let's say you were to list your uh, your Malibu home as your primary residence, and were to register to vote out in I California. I do not yeah. have a home in Malibu. Okay, you're the one for with the, the tan. For the record, all right. So let's just say you somehow managed to re register to vote uh, out there. Let's assume it's done through proper channels. Um, would you vote for this? I would, based on what I know, I would probably vote against it. But I think it's a. I think that what the a lot of the union questions are reasonable. I'm just not happy with the mechanism that they've chosen sort of to, 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 try to, to try to have an impact on it. How about you? So John, the uh, polling shows this only has about a 25% chance of passage. I would vote for it. And this, to me, is a classic kind of a protest vote. It's not going to be like Donald Trump and, and get elected. It's going to be, if you turn up the heat a bit, it will then cause the legislature in California to look at it. That might set us on the right road. Well, we certainly need to be having a lot more conversation about a 40 two billion dollar problem that could quickly turn into a 75 billion dollar problem we can't afford all this stuff and at least this at least the ballot initiative has gotten the conversation started all right john let's keep our eye on it on election day okay look forward to it